the world's most extensive humanitarian crisis since 1945, is currently playing out in the four countries that surround Lake Chad. Cameroon, Chad, Niger and Nigeria. The emergency in the region affects some 17 million people. 7.2 million are dependent on food aid and 2.4 million have been displaced. What are the root causes? How important is climate change? And what should be done to secure lasting peace? The international community has recently recognized that the crisis, humanitarian crisis in the Northeast, is one of the worst disasters in human history. So, honestly, children are dying for malnutrition. Up till today, Boko Haram is still abducting women and girls, and then do forceful recruitment is happening. So it's just unfortunate, honestly. Aujourd'hui, on sait que, au niveau de la région du lac Tchad, euh, le, la situation économique s'est complètement détériorée, puisque ces populations qui vivaient principalement de pêche, d'élevage et d'agriculture se sont vues aujourd'hui abandonner leur, leur terre et se retrouver dans des camps de déplacés. Multiple pressures converge around Lake Chad, ranging from unemployment and poverty, to political marginalization and gender-based violence, to climate change impacts such as droughts, desertification and depleting resources. Lake Chad is critically important to the surrounding population, providing water to more than 68 million people. The population is constantly growing, but the availability and the predictability of the lake's waters have reduced dramatically. Aujourd'hui, ça représente en quelque sorte un miracle, une sorte d'oasis au milieu de cette Afrique subsaharienne, mais ça ne veut pas dire que dans le contexte du changement climatique, ce milieu reste extrêmement fragile puisque ce, le changement climatique actuel euh, est caractérisé par une très grande variabilité. Euh, même si on voit depuis les, le début des années 90 une réaugmentation de sa superficie due à une intensification du cycle hydrologique, également euh, des, des événements extrêmes de précipitations qui sont de plus en plus euh, fréquents. Donc c'est pour cela que le lac Tchad ne, ne va pas disparaître, en tous les cas pas tout de suite, comme euh, il semblait que ce, ce soit dit. So it is um, a kind of perfect storm of uh, climate fragility risks uh, in that area. These pressures combined contribute to increased conflict between fishers, herders and pastoralists. Large-scale violence, Islamist insurgencies and forced migration are dramatic results. Some people perceive climate change and climate variability as very significant factors contributing to the conflicts, but there are no simple answers. The main cause for all these conflicts that has later become this big uh, insurgency is climate change. The drought that started in uh, 22, 24 years ago is what has affected majority of the populations in the Lake Chad Basin. So people whose livelihood depend on this water become vulnerable. So this is putting the pressure on people to move to where there is water. Le changement climatique est un des facteurs. Le changement climatique n'est pas euh, complètement le seul coupable dans la situation du bassin Lake Chad. Et maintenant, nous avons aussi un système scolaire complètement déstabilisé, un système euh, de santé complètement euh, écroulé. Effectivement, euh, plus de, les structures de santé ne sont plus aujourd'hui fonctionnelles et les écoles ne le sont encore moins. Donor Nations, in February 2017, pledged $672 million in emergency aid. But the actual help must be grounded in the reality of people's lives. That means that humanitarians and peace builders have to take into account the specific risks to and roles of women, girls, boys and men. They have to factor in structural, political exclusion and widespread corruption and include current and future environmental problems. 
So I just came back from a mission with the World Food Program and the purpose of that mission was basically to get a better insight of the complexity of the problems around the Lake Chad Basin. And it was quite interesting as we had the chance to visit many IDP camps and talking to many humanitarian organizations. A couple of the IDP camps that we visited, it is basically women um, that ended up there because the small villages were destroyed, totally burned down, men were killed, uh, women then had to escape with their children. But what I realized is that there is a dual development crisis that they had to leave on the one hand as dis displaced people, but the kind of suffering is going to continue in these um, IDP camps. Most of the, the, the areas around Lake Chad Basin have been desperately poor for the last decades. Uh, authorities, governments have not looked after the people, have not looked after social systems. I think a lot needs to be invested in social security, social systems, education, gender training, if you so will, to get some kind of perspective of stability. But it needs a long breath and patience for the international community. Humanitarian organizations come in, they do their job, they help the people, they try to manage a crisis. But this should always be done in close consultation and in coordination with the government of the respective country. Otherwise, of course, there would be a crowding out effect. It is imperative to include all stakeholders in the policy process. Adelphi therefore organized a meeting on Lake Chad with donors, climate scientists, and local practitioners who are engaged in civil society and speaking on behalf of women and youth. What we've been able to do um, with some success, I think, is, is really get a, a 360 degree insight into some of the, the complex compound challenges because they're not just environmental challenges. It's not just about the water table shrinking. One part of the uh, solution or approaches to uh, climate change and um, fragility is always governance. So how, um, how are the governments, the, both the national governments and the uh, provincial governments, working on this? Are they including local people in the solutions as they develop them? Are they working together? Are they cooperating? To sustain peace in the Lake Chad region all over Africa and to deny uh, uh, space for recruitment to terrorism in, in the continent, you really have to empower, give young people opportunities. You have to deal with issues that are displacing them and affecting their livelihoods, such as climate pressures. And you really have to ensure that, uh, uh, th that they're represented in the political processes. How do we address it? At the level of the state, we have to reduce fragility. At the local level, dialogue between resource users between different ethnic groups. We are trying to uh, share the resources. We have the common pool resources equitably. The security challenges are daunting. Diplomacy needs to consider the overall picture when planning or supporting interventions in the Lake Chad region. When Sweden was the chair or the president of the Security Council in January, we actually brought together a meeting on the Lake Chad region for, for the first time. One of the results for the, from that meeting was uh, the council going uh, on the trip uh, in early March and I joined that trip. It was a trip of, of PRs on the council, the 15 members, and we went to Cameroon, to Chad, uh, to um, Niger and to Nigeria. The more immediate uh, measure is to strengthen the capacity in the secretary, uh, around the secretary general to assess climate related risks but also to suggest how those risks can be managed and managed early on before conflict erupts as a matter of, of prevention. After we have submitted uh, the report New Climate for Peace to the G7 foreign ministers, they have agreed to set up a working group to think about what kind of action the G7 foreign ministers could take. And they agree on conducting a joint risk assessment on one region. The Lake Chad came up as the most interesting example where the most political need is. And this is actually where our mission is now contributing to, to find out what we can do. What we would like to do uh, over the next year is really to conduct that study based on field visits there, interviews, and help then the organizations plus the international community in order to uh, development perspectives and also mechanisms for intervention uh, that could help the humanitarian organizations to move ahead from relief to recovery and resilient programs. Mm -hmm.